Hello everyone, this is your boy, Austin Joy Dean, aka Jolana Warta, and welcome to another Pokemon Battle video! And today, we are basically taking on week one of the PLCL. Now, if you guys don't know what the PLCL is, there's gonna be a title called Right to My Right of this video, where it's basically gonna take you to the PLCL announcement. Now, what you can find in that announcement is basically all the coaches that are participating in this tournament, and one of them being none other than Goki Gamer, who is by far th my biggest rival here. I don't care whoever is involved in this, but Goki is my main rival, and as a matter of fact, fun fact, he helped me team build. He's probably going to help me team build for this whole entire league, because you're... Your boy is not in the right, like, he's not, like, uh, how would you say, it? this is my first ever tournament, and I try to have as much guidance, because I'm not too familiar with the Little Cup League, or any draft league in general, so I might need a little help from someone who's had already big experience, so shout out to Goki Gamer, I'll leave all his channel content in the description below, because my boy is definitely helped me, he helped me prep the team that you guys see on the screen, so without further ado, let's go over what Actually, before I even do that, I how rude of me. I did not introduce who our opponent is for this week. It is the Chicago Dragabolts, a.k.a. Q the Costa Rican. So, honestly, this battle was phenomenal. It was beyond phenomenal, guys. You guys don't even know. So, anyways, the team that we are carrying on for this week, as you guys can see momentarily on the screen, is Basura, a.k.a. Uh, the Larvitar, Mio, the Ponyta, Takigawa, the Helioptile, Lyla, uh, with Scr a.k.a. Skrell, Maria, uh, a.k.a. Hatena, Rukia, a.k.a. Galarian Corsola. Now, these are the items I decided to run on them. Now, as a fun fact, guys, uh, if you guys, actually, I, I said this in my original commentary recording, I was saying, if you guys understand these nicknames and why I nicknamed this, I would definitely, like, smash that like button. I mean, I'll definitely smash, I mean, the, your comment, because if you guys get the reference, then you guys get the reference. Now, for those who don't get the reference, don't worry. I mean, honestly, you could just look up the title of each nickname, and you guys are going to know where this, uh, the nicknames come from. But anyways, uh, let's go and look over at our opponent's side. So, out of all the Pokemons, uh, he basically decided to have, he has the Score Bunny, Marini, Honedge, uh, Mudbray, uh, I think that's Fungus, and Lidden. Now, out of all six of his Pokemon, I predicted one, two, three. I predicted four of his Pokemon. I didn't think he'd bring the Lidden and the Marini. Uh, the only reason why was because his team ha does... A Fungus does more effective damage than Marini. That's why I rooted out Marini out. Because I did have, basically, Pokemon that can deal with the Marini. And not that much for the Fungus. So, anyways... That's my opponent's team. That's my team. Now, honestly, let's go into the first round. Now, I apologize if my voiceover for this is going to be kind of wacky, um, even though I've been doing this for quite a few times. But I'm definitely going to go ahead and try my very best to give you a play-by-play -play of what I was thinking. So, I started to lead off with Corsola G because I wanted to set up my rocks. Now, honestly, uh, that this was my biggest and play that I did wrong throughout this whole entire battle and I did not know that he'd go for the taunt as you guys can see basically he taunted me and now look at that look at that yeah so he taunted me and now I couldn't use Stealth Ross so that was basically a waste of my turn and honestly throughout this whole entire thing I was thinking I should go for the Earth Power turn one but now knowing that I went for the Stealth Rock he, I, I feel like if he thought he got me in check. But no, I uh, I luckily packed Earth Power. So I said, you know what? His team is really weak against ground. Aside from Mudbreak, who could definitely take the hits. And honestly, throughout this whole entire like process where I was thinking, I was like, he might bring in the Mudbreak. And in my head, I was thinking, wait, if I attack Mudbreak, it would just gain of its defense. But that only works... I mean, the stamina ability only works if I hit him physically, but luckily, Earth Power is hits on the special side, so that was very good on my side. So, I shot out that Earth Power, and BAM! I don't think I one-shot it. Oh wait, did I? No, I did not one-shot, unfortunately, Lidden, so definitely that kind of whack, and now Rukia is definitely going to be fodder after this. 
Uh, this is where I was kind of debating if I should have swapped out because he might go into the mud break. He might go into something else that could definitely deal damage on my boy Corsola. So, luckily, I outsped the lit end. The only reason I sped out was because of the crunch and my weak armor ability. That gave me the plus two speed and it gave me another speed to outspeed the lit end and basically pick up the KO. So, that's one KO on Rukia, aka Galarian Corsola, to prove how useful she can be. So, this is not the end of Rukia just yet. Uh, as you can see, we're just waiting for Q the Costa Rican to basically decide what next Pokemon he's going to throw in the towel. So, uh, if, if this can hurry up a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, honestly, honestly, I think throughout this whole entire video, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I pick up the first kill. This is a good, this is good, this is good. So anyways, he decided to bring out his baby, aka the Marini. Now, Marini was one of the Pokemons that I was really, really, really afraid because Marini does work. It has Stealth Rock, compact the Talk to Spies, compact the Spikes, could definitely ruin my team if you wanted to because I unfortunately don't have any Defoggers and honestly, I don't think that's me spoiling myself really at all. I really couldn't do much about it. Uh, I mean, I think I do have a Defogger or something that get rid of rocks to be honest. Okay. So anyways, as you can see, I decided to Earth Power the Marini, and the reason why I decided to uh, Earth Power the Marini was to pick up the damage. I didn't want to switch out into anything, really, that I, I felt like it was just pretty much like Rikia was sealed sealing her fate here. So I try to do as much damage as I can, and unfortunately, that's going to go to hell, because you'll see in a little bit, as well, throughout the battle, as to why. So now Rikia, so at this point, I was just like... What do I do here? Should I swap out and save out Rukia? But honestly, at this point in stage of the health and in general, Rukia is just better off dead now. So unfortunately, I decided to... Well, actually, this is not bad. I mean, I only had one option. was basically do as much damage as I can to my baby and do as much as I could. So I could have strength sap definitely. That was going through my mind. As you can see, I was just calming down for a little bit, thinking if I should go for the strength sap and just try to save my life as much as possible. But it had already knocked me off, and my Eevee Light was gone, so practically Rukia was practically useless. So, bye bye, and that is the end of Rukia. So, Rukia is down, but she did prove her worth. She took care of the Lidden, which was definitely the major threat here. So, anyways, so moving on from here, I was debating on what Pokemon I wanted to go to, and honestly, my main Pokemon I really wanted to go to was Mio, and because uh, I just wanted to. I, at this point, I didn't remember how much health the Marini had left, so my strat was to go into Ponyta and hit up that Flame Charge. Which I'm lagging a little bit, because this, this was me thinking of what Pokemons I wanted to bring in. So I decided to throw in Ponyta, and I wanted to go for the Flame Charge, but I was so debating. Like, I had to look close up on my screen, because my right now I'm recording from... I mean, at the time I was recording, I was basically trying to look into my computer, and it was kind of blurry, but I was trying to see its health, and I noticed it wasn't very low enough. As you can see right now, I was debating if I should just pick up the kill with the flame charge, but I was scared that it wouldn't do enough damage. So I basically had to go uh, with my gut and hopefully go for the high horsepower. Unfortunately, that kind of sucks. I don't know. I would never know if the flame charge would have picked up the kill here. Maybe it wouldn't have, maybe it will. This is Little Cup format, so the attack stats and the defense stats are a little bit wonky, so they play on a different field. So anyways, I'm here debating, it's like, oh my god, what should I do? Should I just go for the Flame Charge or not? Or, oh my god, I'm running out of time, so I need to decide quick, or it's the timer's going to decide for me. So I said, frick it, I'm going to go for the High Horsepower, and hopefully I don't miss. And here is where it's kind of whack. If I had just used in Flame Charge, actually... It doesn't matter what I went for. I still did a good amount of damage. Now, luckily, I went for the highest horsepower because I think the flame charge wouldn't have done much. Uh, let's see, real quick. Uh, I mean, I would have done fine damage. Uh, it would have done all right. But now, here's the moment, the highlight, the pinnacle of this battle. It was the Power Herb Solar Blade. This, I was actually kind of scared at the same time because I didn't think that Solar Blade would kill off this 
my bray. So it uh, luckily it picked up the kill on Handsome. So Handsome is dead. The biggest threat on my team was the Mudbray, and now it's down. And now at this point, I was like hyping it up. I knew that once Mudbray is down, Lydon is down. Basically, I'm free to do whatever the frick I want now. Kind of in a way. Just need to get rid of Marini. So now he brought in Goten, which, by the way, I mentioned this in basically in, in a little post podcast that I did with Kila Quarters Costa Rica and I was just like oh my god I love the fact that you named Score Bunny Goten which is a Dragon Ball Z reference if you guys did not get that reference I don't know where you've been you've been living under a rock so my boy Goten this is a Pokemon I was actually scared right next to my brain because Libreo ability is OP now keep in mind I did not use any flame charges so I'm surprised I even outsped this or for whatever it was worth because Scorbunny is pretty be speedy, you know? So I'll, I managed to take it out with um, Ponyta. So that is two kills on this Ponyta. So this is worth MVP material. So now Marini is up on the field now. At this point, it was kind of terrifying what I should do. I don't know if I should go for Wild Charge or I should go for High Horsepower. I think I was trying not... I think I went for the Wild Charge because I was trying not to bank my luck with High Horsepower for it to miss and basically cost me the match. And basically, it, it, I don't know. Uh, if I had gone for high horsepower, it might have changed the game. It might have. It may or may not. But I managed to pick up the kill either way. So now Ponyta has three kills under his belt. Which is proves to be the MVP for this battle of week one. With Ponyta picking up three kills. So there you go, guys. So now leading on to his fourth Pokemon being Buddy. Now this is where I just decided to go for the flame charge and see if I could have picked up the kill for the rest of the team. But uh, y'all about to see what's up, what happened. So he basically, sh I basically went for the flame charge, did not kill. If I had flare blitz, I might have been able to kill it off. And I might have succeeded in having my 6-0. I mean my 5-0 with Ponyta and picked up the rest of the kills with him. But unfortunately that's not how things went. So I try to bank on it and go as... Hoping for the first turn wake up or second turn wake up as you'll see in a little bit So he decided to swap out his fungus wisely into Hone Edge Now I was kind of confused as to why he would automize I was thinking maybe he's gonna try to sweep me So oh, oops I see I went a little bit ahead of me so uh, He's I'm basically deciding what I should do and I was just like you know what frick it If I wake up I'll just go for the flame charge and do as much damage as I can So unfortunately turn I'm asleep for another turn, and here's the Automize I was talking about earlier. Now, I was kind of confused on what he was trying to do with the strat, and you guys will know in the post commentary. I don't know if I'll include it, that segment or not, because we were talking for quite a while. But anyways, um, in this very section, I woke up, luckily, luckily I woke up. So, had he Automized for two times, I definitely would have been goners. I, that would have been just GG for me. But I saw the fact that uh, basically Hone Edge shot me with that Shadow Claw. And at this point, I am I have 5 HP left. And I had a feeling he might go for the Shadow Sneak Kill because of Life Orb. I definitely would have killed had I not switched. So in this turn, I was like, what if he has Sacred Sword or a Fighting Type move? Because I think Hone Edge gets uh, a couple Fighting Type moves. Uh, I'm not sure what Fighting Type moves in specifically. Maybe like Sacred Sword or something. I don't know. But I knew it did get a fight type move. So I had a banking on it here. So I decided to go ahead and go for the safe switch in. And go into Takigawa the Helioptile. Which you will see. I was like oh my god I played him like a book. <laughs> well not really but. I basically risked it because he could have been. He could have KO'd Takigawa. Had he gone for a fighting type move. But luckily I didn't. Because I'm running a choice card for Helioptile. And now. Uh, this good thing I did though. Good thing I brought in a choice card Helioptile and I managed to Dark Pulse this team. And I kill it off. So there is Helioptile. Helioptile picks up one kill. Uh, that's bye bye Yimmy. Bye bye Honich. So now he's down to his six Pokemon. Now, no matter what happened here from here on out, I knew I won. Now, I was trying to pick up the kills as many as I can. I try to have as, I guess, for ratio or whatever. I'm not too familiar with draft leaks and how they work. So, if you guys can let me know in the comment section below, I'd definitely appreciate it. So, anyways, at this point, 
in this battle, I was just like, I have to 5-0. I've worked so hard not to just go down with 4. No, no, no. I'm going down with 5. So I could, I was kind of scared to stay in with Takigawa because I've, I'm choice carved into Dark Pulse and it really just won't do much. And it's not going to do the damage that I need it to do. So it's just as effective. And I just said, you know what, frick it. I'm just going to stick in with Takigawa and hope for the best. Now I could have switched into Maria and just gone for the Psychic and that would have just been it, right? But I, I was, I, I don't know. I, maybe that's something I could have done differently. But... I, at the end of the day, I just stuck down with the Dark Pulse, and here's where it came in clutch for your boy. So I went for the Dark Pulse, and it fledged. So that was very crucial, because he could have gone for the Spore and basically bought himself more turns up for whatever. He could have Leech Seed me. He was free to do whatever he wanted. And that's bye 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 Fungus. That's it. That's the end of Fungus. So, with that being said... I won this battle. It was a clean 5-0 in my favor. I mean, definitely things could have gone a lot wrong in that battle. Had I not just... It had a, had Ponyta not done what it had to do at the right moments, I think that battle would have been completely different. And I could have potentially lost week one. But luckily, I did not. So that was the battle with Q the Costa Rican. And week one ended up with a dub on your boy. So that is very hype. So give me some hype in the chat. I think I deserve this W. Even though I had some help. Uh, still, again, I've never been in a part of a draft league. And I'm pretty proud of my dub, you know. Uh, mainly, it was all about brain power. The only moment I that wasn't my brightest moment was the very first turn being the taunt. I mean, I don't know if I would have predicted that. I don't think I would have predicted taunt. Shoot. Heck, I wouldn't even predict that, <laughs> at least for me, since I'm pretty much an amateur. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this battle, drop down a like, or should I say, smash that like button. Comment down below what's your favorite part of this battle, in your own opinion. And with that being said, I'll see you next week for week two, which I'm not too sure who we're up against. Uh, if I know, by the time I upload this video, I'll definitely just leave it right here. But whoever it is, that's our next opponent. Blop. Boom. All right. With that being said, this has been your boy Awesome Joey Teen, and I'm signing out. Peace!